These videos are educational in nature and are designed to help people over 21 who smoke cigarettes switch to a less harmful alternative. What's up everybody, Grim Green here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm actually mildly excited about this product that we're gonna be looking at today. This is the Geek Vape L200. They're calling it the classic kit and what this is designed to be and look like is the old, original Aegis legend, like the classic Aegis. Sorry, the classic Aegis as a dual 21700. So basically like every vapor's dream. I am, boop, very confident we can get this set up right now. There's the device itself, that looks familiar. Now I never had an original Aegis legend. I only used them uh, roundabout and heard about them. This feels in my hand a little bit bigger. It looks real nice and feels real nice. This honestly feels great. This feels higher quality paint than I have felt on other Geek Vape products in the past. Got a big squishy leather cutout. Now this looks like the old Aegis Legend, but it kind of comes with all the upgrades and bells and whistles that the new Geek Vape Legends have had. Not Legends, Aegises have had. Like that manual locking switch. There's a very, very firm trap door on the bottom, but that trap door is spring-loaded. Your battery sled is clearly marked positive and negative. Get some batteries in there, boot it up. The screen looks, eh, you know, the kind of the same as it always has. Three clicks on the fire button is gonna allow you to change all of the different modes. There's temperature control, nickel, titanium, stainless steel. There's a bypass, there's a vaping power curb. I think we're gonna try to get this back to power. I did get a warranty. I did get an instruction manual. I did get a nice warning. My kit came with the updated Z-Max sub tank. This uses the M series of coil heads. I got a 0.14 and a 0.2. I'm kind of gravitating towards the 0.14 right now. This obviously has a board borderline comedically big bubble glass on there. It's top airflow. It's just a quick three quarter turn to fill it. Not exactly impossible to read coil heads. And then blah. And hopefully filling this up will give you a better idea of how completely dorky this bubble glass looks on here. It's big and out of focus. The device just asked me if this is an old coil or a new coil. It's a new coil. <sighs> The top airflow still feels surprisingly smooth. I thought there would be some hollowness to it. Yeah, anyway, this is a 0.14. I'm gonna start this off at about 65 watts. Cheers, let's see how this goes. First toot, not bad. I wish there was a little bit more crackle. Like I wish there was a little bit more crispiness to this to this coil head. It feels very flavorful, but it, it also kind of feels a little dull. I don't even know if that's a good descriptor or not. Unfortunately, a little bit of hollowness remains in there, but the overall like nostalgic feeling I'm having right now of putting this like classic Aegis Legend design in my hand is really doing it for me. This thing is, hyper rubberized. The Aegis Legends used to be known for like the toughest mods around. They're, you know, IP68 waterproof, dustproof, shockproof. I felt like Geek Vape started kind of getting away from that a little bit. And now it's obviously back in full force. So here we go. I'm going to keep using this. We're treating this like a pod review, which means today is day one. I'll catch up with you on day, you know, 16. Good morning. You like my coffee mug, Hollow Notes? Come on, how, how do you not want that? The reality is I started my review for this Geek Vape Aegis L200 well over a month ago. Well over a month and a half ago at this point. It's been a really long time. There's a long story behind it. Originally, I thought this wasn't going to get released. That's what I had heard from Geek Vape is they're like, don't do a review yet. It might not get released. So I said, oh, shit, okay. Well, it's just going to a holding pattern. I'll just keep using it and keep using it and keep using it and keep using it. And honestly, it's been great. These 0.14 coil heads are still nice and flavorful. I, I, I don't know why I'm using it plural. I have one in here. This is the one coil head I've been using. It's a 0.14. It's remained nice and flavorful. I do get some good crackle from it, but mostly what bums me out about this updated tank I've never super enjoyed the top-down airflow on a sub-tank. It always seemed unnecessary to me, and it just adds a level of hollowness I, I don't super enjoy in this type of, uh, you know, airflow. I will say the first test that I put this through when it went into its holding pattern was to sit on the desk and do nothing for about a week. Just let that coil head sit 
in its own slop and its own slurp just to see what happens. My first toot back, like the first one was a little bit sloppy, but it cleared up like so quickly. I was, I don't know, I was very surprised by that. Now, the real reason why I think anybody would be buying this kit is for this device. You know, the tank, it's really neither here nor there. It, it's gonna fall firmly into the fine bucket. As a kit, it does add something to it, but really the device is, I think, what matters here. And is it, you know, Aegis legendy enough? And I absolutely feel it's Aegis legendy enough. I haven't been exactly roughing mine up. I've dropped it here and there. I've dropped it on concrete here and there, and it's survived just fine. And it is a monster comparatively. It's just, look, it's got a big, big, big hand feel. It's the biggest mod I've felt in recent memory. It feels bigger to me than a Hexom. And a Hexom is a real hand filler. This feels substantially bigger than that. I think if you know what you're getting into with 21700 batteries, I almost imagine how this feels in the hand. Honkin' <laughs> is how it feels in the hand. We're not gonna end this party here because I really just wanna use this device. I wanna use it with other toppers on it because as it stands, it's really just been a desk warrior. It hasn't left, I haven't taken it anywhere, and I wanna see the reality of like going out and about and around and like taking a car trip or running some sort of errands with a device this big, like the reality of doing that. So after I feel like I've got a good grip, uh, come on, that's hilarious. Trying to find something I could put on here like now, now. Kennedy, I have a Kennedy. This is actually built really high resistance for a series. So the Aegis should be able to handle it no problem. Yeah, plenty, plenty of power. You know, my wife does nothing but vape a Hexome, a Recoil, and Omboy's Mango, so I feel like the least I could do is consistently vape an L200 with a Kennedy and Omboy's Mango. If she can do it, I can do it. All right, I'll catch up with you guys later. It's time to end the L200 video. As you saw, I didn't really bash this around too much. I drug it around on the concrete. It didn't affect the fit and finish of this literally in any capacity. Everything on the rubber just wiped off. There was some slight, look, there was some slight, slight chipping and whatever of the paint when I was dropping it on the concrete there, some slight damage. I guess this paint isn't indestructible, but you know, nobody expected it to be. The only thing I noticed recently after I dropped it, and I don't know if this was because I was dropping it around, is when I thread this RTA in here, I can feel it come to a stop, and then you can kind of go like a little bit further, but it's a little bit crunchy. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature. Everything sits on here very super hyper secure. Just these threads feel crunchy at the end for some reason. Listen, at the end of the day, is this an Aegis? Yes, absolutely it is on every level. Is it also gigantic in my hand? Yes, it is. But I mean, when you think about this on the scale of devices, I also have monster things like this giant Def Mods lipo box. Compared to this, it's a small device. Compared to a lot of other things that I've been using, single battery devices, Boro devices, this just seems gigantic. But it is undeniably cool, undeniably beefy, undeniably rugged, and undeniably powerful. It has two 21700s on the inside. I really, really very see the appeal of this device. I think I said at the beginning of this video, which I had a mustache, by the way, that's how long ago this was. But I think at the beginning I said, this is basically every vapor's dream. And I think that's where we're gonna land. 10 banana stickers. Everything I put on here from the sub tank it comes with to an RDA to an RTA to everything in the middle has worked and functioned flawlessly. Like I said, this has plenty of power. It's the Aegis, you know, and here we are right at the end of the video. So I'm going to tell you this, no vape budget hands, no aliens game, but 
it's it's an ages. If you are a person that smokes cigarettes, look how much better this is. You don't necessarily have to anymore. There are a multitude of safer nicotine products out on the market in the description of this video. I'm going to put links to Just Science and Just Education. This has been a Grim Green video. I always put it too far away. Stay smoke free every single day. <coughs> it's like 1030 and then I'm uh, just going to smoke. So. I can't, I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. I am shooting video at the moment, but I love you tremendously.